Sir, this is a arbitration and conciliation amendment 2018 and I would like to quote the famous saying of Mahatma Gandhi because the arbitration in our country is deep rooted in villages we have seen that the issues are being settled by arbitration and I would also like to suggest Kharche sir, if any issue is there we can also settle outside the parliament also if that's for arbitration we are talking about the arbitration. Mandri so the, the, in the words of Mahatma Gandhi I would like to quote it, <coughs> quote differences we shall always have but we must settle them all whether religious or other by arbitrations. And at the same time, in the word of Lord in Denning, he was one of the famous jurists and the judge, uh, and he said in one of the cases that arbitration is one of the most important spheres of activity in the system of administration of justice. And likewise, in our country also, it is the policy of the government that the, we always encourage resolution of the dispute through arbitration and alternative dispute resolution is one of the mechanisms whereby we can resolve the dispute. Chairman, sir, due to the globalization, industrialization, and development of the economy all over the globe, the commercial dispute has increased manifold. And to, because and the imbalance has been created, one way large number of disputes have been created, and at the same time, the, the, so far the resolution of the dispute is concerned that is the outpace. So that's why this Arbitration and Conciliation Act will be prove a milestone for resolution of the dispute between the parties. Sir, I would also like to make it clear that large number of cases are pending in our countries, around 3 million cases are, uh, 30 million cases are pending. And with a view to declog the pendency of the dispute, this ADR mechanism has been created. And earlier we have also amended the Act of 1996 in the year 2015 by Amendment Act 2015 and this Act of 2019-96 by way of Amendment in 2015. It has been made user-friendly, cost-effective and the cases are being decided expeditiously. Sir, I would also like to make it clear that because the, at the time of working of the Act of 2019-96 as amended in 2015, this we have seen the practical difficulties with respect to the working of the uh, Arbitration Act and for that purpose a high level committee was constituted under the chairmanship of the B.N. Krishna Supreme Court judge to identify the road black block, how we can make more effective, how we can provide the institutional arbitration, how we can identify the road black, how we can institutionalize the arbitration. Therefore, this is the first time, because in our country we don't have institutionalized arbitration. Therefore, the robust center for institutional arbitration was created and the arbitration, it may be a domestic arbitration, it may be international arbitration. We have seen that the large number of cases are being conducted abroad, outside the country. This, whenever the, any arbitration issue is involved, either the seat of the arbitration is in the London or in the Singapore or in the Paris. So all our arbitration cases are being conducted. We have seen also the cases where the government is involved in the bilateral issues, where the bilateral treaty has been signed with so many countries. Those issues are also being uh, referred and de decided by the arbitrators situated either Hague or, or in London or in Paris. So that's why under the able leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, it is visualized that the India should also have a seat of arbitration. We must also have an institution and therefore the, for creating institutional arbitration, certain recommendations was made by the high level committee uh, and those recommendations was with respect to establishment of independent body. Earlier there was no body. Only the Arbitration Act was there. And that act nowhere provides the institutional, although this act came into force in 1996, but thereafter no such body was created. Therefore, the, this body is required to be created, that is an independent body, and that body is required to grading the arbitration, getting the end accreditation of the arbitration. So grading the arbitration institution, and at the same time accreditation of the arbitration, arbitrator. So therefore, 
to minimize the need to approach the court. Therefore, once it is done, then most of the cases will be settled outside the court. We have seen in one of the developed jurisdictions, like in America, in UK and France, they are having the alternate dispute resolution outside the court and maximum cases are being disposed, around 75 cases are being disposed of outside the court and the courts are not being burdened. So this mechanism is India want to create and by this mechanism we want that not only the domestic arbitration issues, we want that the international arbitration issues should also be settled in our country. And for this purpose, after taking into consideration the recommendation of the high level committee constituted under Justice B. N. Krishna and certain recommendations were made for with respect to appointment of the arbitrator by the arbitral institution. Normally, earlier we used to approach the high court. In case of dispute between the party for appointment of an arbitrator, the application is used to be filed in high court and thereafter if any order is passed by the high court, then aggrieved person then approach against the next, then the division bank and again before the Supreme Court. So it takes a lot of time. If the, for appointment of the arbitrator, it takes a lot of time, therefore to curtail that time and to impart the justice, redressal of the grievances to the aggrieved party, this mechanism has been created, therefore the arbitral institution, creation of the arbitral institution and those arbitral institutions will be graded by the council. And, and not only that those will be graded by the Supreme Court and High Court. If the, that particular institution is dealing with the cases with respect to the international arbitration, then those will be graded by the Supreme Court. If that is within the jurisdiction of that particular High Court, then that will be graded by the respective High Court. And in case there is a, no creation of the arbitral institution and the appointment of arbitrator, then the respective Supreme Court Chief Justice and High Court will take into consideration. So the, so that's why if in case the, there is no addition taken by the Council with respect to the gradation of the arbitral institution, then I have said that the Supreme Chief Justice of the High Court shall maintain the panel of arbitrators. And those will function and duties of the arbitral institution. Sir, I would also like to make it clear that the part 1A was inserted, it is a newly inserted provision under the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 as amended by this bill of 2018 for establishment and incorporation of completely independent body. Nothing to do with the government. So that body, that is the Arbitral Council of India. First time this council is being created, we want to create India a hub of arbitration. Therefore, the that council will, the function and duties of that council is for grading arbitral institution and at the same time provide accreditation of the arbitrators. So basically, in India, the arbitrator, arbitration council of India will function, by, by perform two functions. One is grading arbitral institution and other is accreditation of arbitrators. And it can, it will also provide certain norms because we are also authorizing the Arbitration Council of India to provide the norms and their view is because earlier there was no institution to promote and encourage arbitration. Now we are creating arbitral, uh, Arbitration Council of India to promote and encourage arbitration and this, this basically at the same time no, promotion for the arbitration, promotion for the conciliation and mediation, promotion for the alternate dispute resolution mechanism. And apart from this, Arbitration Council of India shall also evolve policy. Because the policy decision is required to be taken by that, we are also delegating that and guideline. How it will function, how it will discharge its duties for establishment, operation and maintenance of uniform professional standards. Because so many arbitrators will be there. Earlier there was no qualification, no education qualification, no experience. Now it is being formalized. And from that they will lay down the, what type of standard is required for the arbitrator, what type of standard is required for the professional. Therefore, the, by creating this mechanism, we want to create the India a hub of international arbitration. So sir, the statement of claim and defense. 
because we see that large number of time is wasted in the court and earlier also in the arbitration proceeding large number of time was wasted again long adjournment adjournment and adjournment and it basically that was a roadblock in the ease of doing business for our country we have also established the commercial courts and those commercial courts are resolving the disputes and apart from this arbitration and insolvent bankruptcy court all these created a, a ecosystem in our country and this is the reason that we have jumped from the ease of doing of world banking from 136 to 103 and this is the insolvent bankruptcy court apart from this commercial court and we have recently passed the commercial court act wherein the we have threshold limit have been reduced from one crore to three lakhs and this is the reason that our ranking because theory we have performed well but in practical we are awaiting the ranking from the world bank and very soon we will be graded well and our ease of doing business because we are performing as per the guidance and direction of the honor and vision of our honorable prime minister narendra modi ji so so far the statement and claim is concerned before the proceeding before the court because that is very important aspect of the issue whenever we are filing any statement of claim before the arbitrator then there is no time fix for filing the defense so this time first time by bringing this amendment bill of 2018 we are bringing that the statement of claim to be filed immediately and defense to be filed within six months with effect from the date of arbiter received the notice of appointment once the arbitrator received the notice of appointment within a period of six months a statement of claim by the petitioner what is his claim what he demands what is his grievances and what is his redressal what he is claiming the redressal before the arbitrator that is to be presented and and defense is also required to be presented within the period of six months meaning thereby we want that the justice delivery mechanism should be fast should be immediate so the justice can be imparted and we can because uh, the, the, the direct foreign investors are also there and they are also seeing that what type of action is being taken by the India and it will be prove a milestone for our economy. Sir, with respect to working, so far we have also created a mechanism. Earlier the confidentiality was not there. We have also introduced the provision. We have also inserted the provision in the Arbitration Act, in this Amendment Act regarding the confidentiality. Earlier the information was leaked and nobody was trusting our this justice delivery system. And this is the reason that we have created, uh, we have provided the mechanism that confidentiality is required to be maintained with respect to the working of the arbitration institution completely before the arbitration, with respect to the information furnished, with respect to the arbitrator, with respect to the arbitral institution and the party. All these three, arbitrator, arbitral institution and the parties are required to maintain the confidentiality. And apart from this, this at the same time, the protection has also been given. In good faith, if the arbiter, act of the arbiter, omission of the arbiter, can't be questioned, can't be challenged, so the protection has also been given, not only to the arbitrator, but also to the arbitral institution. Sir, certain clarification under section 26, of the Act 2015, Amendment Act of 2015, because this was also passed by us, and this is a with respect to the applicability. Because it was a clarification is required with respect to when it will be applicable, with effect from what date, when it will be reckoned. These were the, the confusion was there. So we have issued a clarification with that view that insertion is this amendment is also there. So it is applicable only to the arbitral proceeding which commenced on or after 23rd of October 2015 because at the time of Amendment Act 2015 we have made it clear and that, that, that it will be commenced with effect from that date. So these are the, my preliminary view and I request the Honourable Member that it may be kindly considered and be passed.